this week. Yeah, I'm, I'm very tired, my man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I'm not putting on you whatsoever. Yeah. It, it is okay if you could. I would. I would take. I would take the L on it. I'm just very sleepy, and uh, I've reached a giggly point. Yeah. All right. You ready? I've reached giggly point. Welcome to Giggly, giggly point, point, the uh, the theme park where we're yep. too busy laughing to do uh, safety inspections. We make I'm Schlitter Knoxville. Yeah, we make Schlitterbahn look like uh, Disneyland. Mm-hmm. And we make Action Park look like Traction Park. I mean, that's movie. literally what they called it. I know. God damn it, I'm uh, Now I'm thinking park. about Schlitterbahn. Ugh. I, um, the worst beer. Um, hey, have you okay. ever have you ever read about that? No, I don't. I don't know that one. Oh, uh, it's the this water park. They they're all over like Southwest America, uh, and uh, yeah, they didn't test their world's biggest water slide enough, and they killed a kid. Oh, <laughs> the ultimate squeak squeak. They really, <laughs> they really, they really squeak squeak them off to heaven. Yeah, the old Eric Clapton yeah. special. <laughs> Clapton squeak squeaks in heaven. None of this is going in the show. No, it's, it's okay. <laughs> That's fair. I just uh, you know. I, I think that if if you did put this in the show, it is like like the hundredth consecutive minute of me ragging on Eric Clapton's Tears in Heaven. So. I mean, so have I. Like I, yeah, we 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 talk about that a lot because that's such that a guy, it's such a weird move. It's extremely weird. It's in some ways I respect it, in a lot of other ways I think it is worthy of no respect. Did he did he like donate the proceeds from that, or did he just pocket them? He just pocketed them. He put them towards another kid. <laughs> <laughs> he bought his new kid a Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> little fucker. That little fucker. <laughs> Untitled Clapton project. Fucking Dashel Clapton. <laughs> <laughs> Is that did you pull that for real? No, no, no. I just no, okay. I just thought it was a funny name. Anywho. Yeah, sorry. I was just a uh... Oh man. In 2005, Ozzy Osbourne and Sharon Osbourne assembled an all-star cast to collaborate on a Tears in Heaven. Ugh. Uh, for, uh, it was for tsunami relief. That's still <laughs> such a weird fucking thing. Imagine being Eric Clapton's son, seeing that. Like, yeah. oh, okay, well, I had a song, but I guess, you know. Shit, they got some people know. for this. We got Gwen Stefani, Mary J. Blige, Pink, Slash, Duff McKagan... Steven Tyler, Elton John, Phil Collins, Ringo, <laughs> Ringo sat in on God this. God damn, they got Ringo'd. Uh, Ozzy wow. Osbourne and Kelly Osbourne also sang on the song. Yeah, not surprising. Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast uh, where we talk about every single item, every single enemy, every single everything in the Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined by a guy who just can't get that door all the way closed, Gary Butterfield. It is. It remains ajar. Yeah. We're doing some real uh, first grade uh, joke book jokes here. What if uh, after Tears in Heaven, Eric Clapton like when it became like a lobbyist against Windows? <laughs> <laughs> well, then Bill Gates would shut him down. <laughs> yeah, well, he loves Gates. Yeah, he's <laughs> Shit, he does. He hates he loves, Windows, but loves yeah, Gates. He loves Gates, yeah. It's his whole thing. Gary, I think this episode is just going to start like four seconds after the last one ended when we began this long I, tangent. Uh, otherwise, there'd be like tons of end notes. Yeah. Like it'd have to be like the first podcast with end notes. <laughs> Check in, true believer. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, bullpen bill says, how are you doing? I'm Gary. I'm okay. We've got a fun energy going. We it's, do have a fun energy. It's unpredictable. I don't think either of us knew, thought it would happen when we logged on. Yeah. But the, 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 the bad boys of podcasting have logged on. We have logged on and we will continue to log on. We'll never log off. I had that thought today. Like the, the thing going on Twitter right now is what's your unpopular opinion? And I'm I, like, it's yeah. Hey fuckers. Like, have I got a show for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have been, uh, been noticing that. I cannot wait for the, uh, the backlash to that. Oh, uh, it started. It has, it, it is, started? it's, it's, okay. it's, it's ramping up. Okay. Cause I was just like, I understand like, you can just like not answer. Yeah. I don't know. People are really mad about it and I don't understand. Gary, I uh, love you, but you are a man who can get upset at other people enjoying a thing online. I, I definitely can for sure. And people not enjoying a thing online. Yeah. So it's a, uh, yeah, I can definitely get upset at people enjoying a thing online. It's, it's hard. I guess you can mute unpopular. If you uh, didn't like this. Man, but then you'd lose your favorite wicked song. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, that's called popular, but I bet there's a parody version. I see. It's funny because I was reaching for the, uh, the song popular by not a surf. Well, it's because you're way cooler than I am, dude. I I don't know if not a surf is cooler than wicked. I feel like those are probably pretty similar energies. Okay. (laughs) 1994's, uh, hottest one hit wonder, not a surf. Uh, and, and Gwen, I know that the album is actually good. Who I know listens and probably likes that Not a Surf album because it is actually good. For a second, I honestly got thought you were addressing Gwen Stefani. Nope. <laughs> the uh, Gwen, I'm here from the future. I'm telling you not to do that Tears in Heaven thing. Eric Clapton is going to push you through a window. Oh, um, <laughs> if you do it. <laughs> so, um, the we're Jar. Talk- yeah, The Jar. Yep. Uh, this is, I think that we need to be mildly careful. Okay. Because this is an episode that's not for us as expert players. Right. This is, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm 100% on board with that that caveat. Yeah. So even though I would say this is an episode for expert listeners yes. of this show. <laughs> this isn't, this is an onboarding week again? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want anyone to start with this week? With this this, week? No, Gary, I'm pretty, Gary, I think if we both were real honest about this week, this is offboarding week. Yeah, this is, this is <laughs> every issue is somebody's last as well. <laughs> the um yeah even though if we really if we want to even be next level honest we would say this is a good week to start with because like i don't know there's something refreshingly unpretentious about this week it's representative it's very representative is exactly the word i was talking about uh we're what's honest to god we haven't been tired recording for a while Mm -hmm. uh we've been like recording in the middle of the day on sundays Yep. Tonight we are, it, the sun is down and Gary is sleepy. I'm really sleepy. I had a, a pretty busy 24 hours and did not get good sleep last night. So I am struggling. I also like had a day where I let my meters go like dangerously low. Like I had a bagel when I woke up, mm-hmm. which is, you know, not nutritively substantial. Yeah. And then nothing else for like, you know, water. There's like bagel oh. and coffee. And then that for like most of the day. And I ate dinner, but I ate a heavy dinner. And uh, I am now in the sleep zone. It's like 930. After we get done recording, I am going to lay down and watch YouTubes and fall asleep. Yeah, Gary's in that old carbohydrate funk. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, So, the jar. Yes. Uh, So, this is a glass jar. This is Mm -hmm. a shop item. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it, what it does is, when you are at full health, correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, because I never use this fucking thing because it's trash for newbie babies. (laughs) Yes. Um, I can you do you just when you walk over red hearts and you're already at full health, it just goes in the jar. Yep. Okay. And then when you hit the space bar, you get those red hearts. Yep. Uh, They fly out onto the floor. Yeah. So if you are playing a version of this game where you are taking a lot of red heart damage, Mm -hmm. then this is incredibly useful. Incredibly useful. Because it lets you take like a room full. Like this can store up to what? 20? No, no, just four, four, four. four. Okay. Yeah. You're thinking of the uh, fly, the, the, flies the jar the, of fly, which is a great item. The good jar. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The good jar. Um, in this one, you know, you can take four. So it lets you save it for like a rainy day. Like uh, you're, maybe you're at this part of the game where you can get past the first couple of floors pretty well. You can get past the first couple of floors without taking damage, but you end up with a bunch of hearts. And then when you get down to the depths, it's really difficult. That's when you need those hearts. You know, you drop them out for you. You know, you get you a little bit further. If this gets you your mom kill. Great. Yeah. You grudge nobody these things. And I actually feel like this is one of, as far as like a baby item that you outgrow, it's one of the better ones because it's just a shop item. Yeah. So you're, like all you're, you're not, doing, you're not, you're not losing your treasure room. You're just spending 15 coins. Yeah. Or not. Or just ignoring it because yeah. you don't need it. it. It takes up the opportunity cost of a better shop item, but that is the only impact it has on my life. Yeah. And uh, like, and the thing that we're kind of talking around is the fact that uh, as you get better at Isaac, uh, not taking red heart damage becomes a priority because red heart damage is the thing that stops you from getting into devil rooms. Yep. And also then the next level is when you start parlaying away your red health, like you have more runs where you just have spirit hearts or low numbers of hearts. You start playing with items that require low numbers of hearts or health to operate with like early on, like the ideal beginner Isaac run is you have 12 red hearts and the ideal later Isaac run is you have 12 spirit hearts. Yeah. Because it enables a lot more stuff. Man, this yeah. item would kick ass in Bumbo, though. Oh, dude. I mean, yeah. but, I mean, because in Bumbo, the healing economy is so tight. It's weird. Like, it, it's it's tight until it's immediately not at all. Yeah, until you have, like, a cheap spell that, like... Yeah, just creates whatever you want. And then it's like, oh, like, I'm invincible. Like, that game is... Uh, I'm, I, I kind of came around to where I think it is even, like, 
swingier and less balanced than Isaac in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Like it is either uh, I I will die and never and like I did not have a chance or I did not have a chance to lose. And and it feels like it vacillates between those two things pretty often. So, um, but that's that's for Duck Feed Presents. Yeah, that's for winging it with Will. Gary, can I hit you with a controversial opinion? Please. Oh, it, only on Twitter though. Ooh, saw the trailer for that Sonic the Hedgehog movie today. That looks mm-hmm. good. That's a very controversial opinion. It looks good. Maybe I and I'm going to admit something. Okay. Seventy percent of this is my affection for Ben Schwartz. Yes. Like, I just like seeing a big budget movie Mm -hmm. where Ben Schwartz is saying, like, sarcastic, funny, weird Ben Schwartz-y things. He's saying, to me, I saw that trailer. Uh Uh-huh. I think he's just saying shitty Sonic things, and I just like the voice because I like Ben Schwartz. Yeah, totally. But it has that kind of, like, weird aside energy that I associate with him. I would agree. It, it It is unusually inspired casting for a character I loathe. I'm also interested in watching more of Jim Carrey as Robotnik. Yeah. Uh, obviously, what is what the fuck Cyclops? I got no interest in. Yeah. James Marsden. Ugh. Yeah. The, <laughs> the white breadiest man on Earth. He's pretty white bready. He's Which actually made him perfect casting for Cyclops. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah, or like him or the guy who played Superman during that weird uh, that interstitial Superman movie. Well, you know, James Marsden's Rose. in that. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah he. That's why he decided not to be an X Men three. Yeah, now, Phoenix kill me in the first five minutes. I don't give a shit. Yeah, um, so that he could go be the more boring white man in yep that. a bit player in this new franchise. Jump ship. I like Brandon uh, Ruth. Brandon Ruth's um, been in a lot of good stuff and is actually pretty cool. And he's, the pictures of him as old Superman from the upcoming uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths TV thing. Mm-hmm. Pretty cool looking. He's very white bread in that Superman movie. Oh, absolutely. He's pretty, pretty lousy. I, the nice the thing, here's the thing about the Sonic movie is that if me and Cole both decide to spend $24 of network money, we can just go see that for adaptation decay. Yeah. And just like, I'll go sit in a theater and watch something like that. And maybe it will be good because of weird Jim Carrey-ness and weird Ben Schwartz-ness. I just, I think, I don't like how Sonic looks when he's near humans. I don't, I don't think that Sonic should ever have interacted with humans. I think that was always a mistake. Yeah. I wish, I, I feel like they should have made James Marsden just a little bit CGI. That would be great if he was like the Polar Express. Yeah. <laughs> like, and there's just just him only up. him. Like, and everyone else was human. It was like two CGI characters, one of which is yeah, really we, Uncanny Valley. Can we get can we get a James Marsden from Welcome to Marwin? <laughs> Welcome to Marsden. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In which a man deals with ex- extreme trauma by recreating various James Marsden characters <laughs> like, and having them say bland nothings to each other. It's basically just the, the his cameo from X-Men 3. The last stand. Mm, Famka um, Jansen. Yep. Famka, she's good. Um, I like her. Um, if you like this show. Yeah. Why not go to patreon.com slash duckfeed TV and give coin. Um, and... Maybe why not write us a review and give us five stars? Yeah, like Strong CR, who wrote, Great show. Well, I don't know about great. Good. <laughs> Maybe. And then I, and then the title cut off. Oh. <laughs> okay. If you're looking for a podcast that when the hosts say, I don't think we have a sign off, you can't tell if it's a bit or if they have legitimately forgotten the <laughs> sign off, this is the show for you. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. Very sweet. God, it feels good. I feel it feels something that the show does uh, is make me feel known. Like, it's very nice. I feel like the the fans of this show, like, I love the people who listen to all of my podcasts, but I like I feel like the fans of the show, like, vibe with it in a stronger way. It's a maybe? very personal show in that, like, we have, like, it's us with our filters as far off as we can get them. Yes. Yeah. In, in a lot of ways, this is, you know, and it's like, this isn't the work. You know, (laughs) the other other shows I'm doing the work and it's like, I'm earning my living. This is not that, but it means the people who connect with it, you know, I just feel like they really connect with it. Yeah. And I think that that comes through in the reviews. It's like, oh, this is, this is very funny. You knew I'd appreciate this. And I did, you know, it's very sweet. It's very touching. Yeah. We're here just to do public service announcements about how much we just love to cram puss in our mouths. Yeah. And how much we hate Eric Clapton's kid. (laughs) (laughs) And third thing, I don't remember what the other callback from this set of episodes yeah, those was. are essentially what the show is about. Yeah. It's eating pussy and killing Eric Clapton's stupid son. So. <laughs> <laughs> Cunnilingus and defenestration here on Everything to Guppy. <laughs> uh, 
<sighs> Good night. Good night. I have to see, before we start recording this one, I have to see if Pocket needs me to get up and free his claw from the fucking blinds. Pocket, why do you do it? <laughs> All right, he's stuck. Hold on a second. <laughs> Damn it. Pocket, buddy, you're in trouble. Hey, 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 relax. It's okay, you're fine. <laughs>